I welcome everyone to the uh, November 2nd meeting of the Warren County Board of Supervisors. Uh, this is uh, where um, our budget officer has an opportunity to uh, present his, uh, his work. And uh, uh, first let me, um, let's begin by um, beginning the meeting with a pledge to the flag by Supervisor Thomas. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. The clerk will uh, read the roll. <coughs> Mr. Leggett? Here. Mr. Diamond? Here. Mr. McDevitt? Here. Ms. Bramer? Here. Mr. Loeb? Here. Mr. Driscoll? Here. Mrs. Fraser? Here. Mr. Simpson? Here. Ms. Hogan? Mr. Dickinson? Here. Mr. Merlino? Here. Mr. Strauss? Here. Mr. Wild? Here. Mr. Beatty? Here. Mr. McGowan? Mr. Sokol? Here. Mr. Thomas? Here. Ms. Hyde? Mr. Garrity? Here. Chair Chairman Conover? Here. And now without any uh, further ado, let me uh, turn the uh, meeting over to our budget officer, uh, Supervisor Frank Thomas. Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Good morning. <coughs> I have a uh, brief uh, statement here that I would like to uh, present to you. I am grateful to again have the privilege to serve as Warren County's budget officer to prepare and present to the Board of Supervisors a proposed 2019 county budget. Thank you to Chairman Conover and the board for the opportunity to serve as the county's budget officer. Thank you to the budget team, County Administrator Ryan Moore, Assistant Administrator T Tammy DiLorenzo, Deputy Treasurer Rob Lynch, <coughs> and Com Confidential Secretary Christy Miller, and Retired Assistant Administrator Joanne McKinstry for your hard work, attention, to detail and guidance preparing this budget. Thank you all very much. Warren County's many department heads are all very capable, talented, and knowledgeable individuals leading their respective departments with the best interests of Warren County taxpayers in mind and serving the residents of Warren County in their various capacities. As budget officer, I have the distinct pleasure of interacting with each one when reviewing and discussing their budgets, listening to their needs and concerns, seeking ways to reduce expenses or increase revenues when possible. I appreciate the knowledge each one brings to the budget process. Thank you to each one. The total proposed budget is $156,880,886, of which the property tax levy is 
$730,096. An increase in the levy of $1,051,848, or 2.41%. This is $99,486 below the allowable cap of 2.7%, or $1,151,334 for 2019. The amount of sales tax included in the 2019 budget is $52,154,551. The actual amount collected in 2017. This is an increase of $1,130,084 over the 2018 budget. Currently at the end of the third quarter, sales tax receipts for 2018 are up 5.4 percent or two million one hundred and twenty seven thousand nine hundred and forty six dollars over 2017. This is the largest increase in recent memory and may hold and may this hold true through the end of the year. This Frank, excuse me, just a second. Not to, are, are you, Paul, are you uh, putting it on the screen too? I, I just didn't know if you forgot or. No. We'll get to that. Right? Oh, okay, thanks. Right okay, get sorry about that. Thank you. <coughs> this budget incorporates the remaining four hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars of debt service for the court project and the SUNY Adirondack project. That is a reoccurring expense, being paid with surplus funds to date. The computer equipment reserve is again funded at $145,000, and the vehicle reserve is funded at $301,000. <coughs> These reserves have served the county well since being established. A 2.6 wage and salary increase is included for all employees with Warren County. The contingent account is budgeted at $623,739, Two hundred and seventy five thousand is the usual amount, and the remaining three hundred and forty eight thousand seven hundred and thirty nine dollars is an amount accounting for an anticipated settlement of the PBA union contract. Six full time and two part time positions are created in this budget, and five full time and one part time position were deleted. There are 11 salary adjustments totaling $23,932. Changing the Medicare Advantage health care plan for the county's retirees created enough savings to compensate for a 12% premium increase and reduce the health insurance expense for 2019 by $122,807. One of the part-time positions created will be tasked with developing a wellness program. Being self-insured, it, it is in the county's interest that everyone be as healthy as possible in an effort to contain future costs for health care. To, to obtain a 2.4 1% increase in the property tax levy and remain under the tax cap, along with many other expense cuts and revenue increases, $1,288,060 of requests have been removed from this budget and are on our list that is before you. I recommend the Board of Supervisors appropriate funds during 2019 from the general fund surplus balance. These items are mainly one-time, not reoccurring expenses that we can pay cash for versus raising taxes. By doing this, the use of general fund surplus in the budget will remain at $1,257,422. Adding to the use of fund balance incorporated into the budget commits the county to future year budget expense until expenses are reduced or revenues increase to allow the reduction 
in the use of surplus included in the budget. These, requ these requests can be funded as presented, adjusted, or eliminated as the board determines. The local mortgage tax is a quarter of 1% or, point, or 25 cents per $100 that in 2017 generated $986,860 of revenue for Warren County. This tax must be renewed every two years by the Board of Supervisors and the New York State Legislature. As we know, the, the Legislature failed to renew this when they were in session and the tax will expire on December 1st, 2018. We have been assured it will be renewed should the legislature go into session after the November election. If not, it could become part of the state budget, which starts on April 1st. The county can't absorb the loss of revenue until April with other mortgage tax revenue not included in the budget. But beyond that, if not reauthorized the state by the state, it will be compensated for from general surplus funds. We should remember and point out that Warren County has one of the lowest property tax rates in New York State. Remains one of three counties, the other two being our neighbors, Saratoga and Washington counties, that the sales tax re rate remains at 7% and our amount of debt the county has is nowhere near our constitutional limit. We can always do better, but we should take pause considering we are in New York State that we are in relatively good shape. With a budget this large and diverse, my head starts spinning occasionally, and it is impossible to satisfy everyone. Not everyone will agree with decisions made preparing this budget. I think it is a responsible budget, given the demands placed on the county by New York State. It will fund Warren County's operations and services as structured, remains below the state tax cap, and will maintain the county's physical health going forward. I respectfully ask for your consideration and support for this 2019 budget. Thank you. And uh, with that, I believe we have a, uh, a PowerPoint presentation that will uh, highlight some of the things I just mentioned and a few others. Uh, the 2019 proposed budget continues Warren County's co compliance of being below the tax cap. <coughs> the proposed $157 million budget increases the levy by 2.41% below the increase allowed by the tax cap. Amount to be raised by tax, $44,730,096. The proposed levy increase means the county tax rate will increase by approximately two thousandths to three dollars ninety three point nine eight six per thousand. <coughs> this means a homeowner with a two hundred thousand dollar property would pay about forty cents more per year. Uh, these rates are obviously equalized amongst all the municipalities. Uh, some are affected a little differently. This budgeting method includes long-term planning in, in a culture where county departments are constantly looking for ways <coughs> of cutting costs and increasing revenues through efficiency measures that still allow for quality services. This budget allows the county to make appropriations that are important to the board, such as maintaining county road funding, Continued replacement plan for vehicles and funding for a computer reserve, raises for non-union employees, and uh, created six full-time positions and two part-time positions and deleted five full-time positions and one part-time position. Okay. 
And this slide is a, uh, a graph that shows uh, where we've been and what's being proposed. Uh, the gold is appropriations, the purple is revenue. Uh, the next slide is uh, full value tax base. Uh, as you can see, our, our uh, tax base uh, is assessed at $11,221,915,216. Uh, this is an increase countywide of $257,000,000. $107,054 and is, I believe, a big part of why the uh, tax rate has increased so little. Uh, next we have uh, significant revenues. Uh, in the general fund, uh, collections of sales tax, $52,200,000. Uh, state aid, 15,700,000 federal aid, 11,200,000 departmental income, 10,900,000 and other income, 12,400,000. Uh, the main items driving revenue projections. Uh, sales tax, the increase of 1,130,000. Uh, the increase, an increase in state aid of 1,315,800, uh, increase in federal aid, 247,700, and uh, airport rentals of uh, 89,000. Excuse me. Yes. Were those, all four of those numbers, increases over this year? Yes, <coughs> I believe so. They're all increases. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is a graph of the uh, sales tax. Uh, what's being proposed? What's estimated for 2018 and the actuals for 16 and 17? Uh, next is the uh, mortgage tax. Uh, this is what's being proposed as included in the budget. Uh, as you can see, it's up $100,000 over 2018. And that's a separate mortgage tax from the local mortgage tax. That's, that's a different one. Uh, items driving increase or decrease in appropriation appropriations uh, wages uh, one million two hundred and forty five thousand dollars an increase a uh, decrease in health insurance of one hundred and twenty three thousand uh, decrease in retirement of thirty seven thousand uh, to me a little disappointing uh, as well as the stock market has been doing the last couple of years I would uh, I would hope that it had gone down more, but I, I think that's something that uh, the county can look forward to uh, going forward, provided the economy stays the way it is. Uh, sales tax distribution, 541,000. <coughs> uh, increase in uh, county roads, uh, 292,000. And a reduction in debt service of 34,000. Uh, the next item is a graph showing the uh, decrease uh, in our health insurance cost. And the next one is the slight decrease in uh, retirement costs. Uh, my recommendations. 
Uh, use of $2,682,080 in surplus fund balance, which includes uh, the general fund surplus, $1,257,422. County road fund surplus, $535,610. Road machinery fund surplus, $294,000. Occupancy tax uh, fund balance, 266195 and the Westmount Legacy Cost, the Westmount Reserve, uh, $328,853. Uh, next, we shall continue to look for efficiencies that will cut costs while providing quality services. We will continue to look for revenue to offset expenses and reduce the use of surplus funds. Uh, continue to explore options for the railroad corridor that will provide a beneficial use and income source for Warren County. Uh, continue to explore the sale of county property adjacent to Route 9. And continue to analyze positions as they become vacant. And the last page is the proposed uh, tax rates uh, based on this proposed budget. Uh, so with that, that concludes my uh, formal presentation. Uh, is it, if there's any questions, I'll uh, try to answer them. And uh, we'll go from there. Yes. Chairman, um, I want to commend you on your hard work on putting this budget together. I know everybody in this room here has experienced the difficulties and the challenges when you're faced with people coming to you asking for more money. Um, it's not an easy task on what you've done. Um, you put the city in a, in a uh, fairly comfortable position. But I'd also like to mention today some recommendations that I would like to put out to my colleagues for thought, consideration in this particular budget. <coughs> I'm going to start with the handout that we were given during the committee meeting. And I just want to go over some of the personnel requests that were submitted. Again, these are recommendations that I'd like to present to the supervisors, potentially change. I don't know if everybody has a copy of this today, but this is the only document that I'm going to work on. What's on the top, Jack? Which one's that? It says personnel request for 2019 Warren County budget. It was presented to us in a committee uh, meeting that we have. Do you have that with you? No. Okay. Well, I'll go through it, if, if you don't mind. I'm going to go with those that have brought it with them today. <coughs> I'm going to start with page two. It appears that in this proposal we're creating a human resource clerk. I'd like to speak to that momentarily, that we're looking for funds tonight on that of $19,200. We're also, in, in this particular budget or this line item, we're looking at 5.4% for the human resource director and human resource specialist. That's above and beyond the 2.6 that everybody else is getting. My thoughts are that there's willing, a willingness there because of the increase in salaries to accept more responsibility. So I would suggest to the board today that we zero out that account of $19,200. Page three, we're looking to create in the Information and Technology Department a computer help desk tech. We currently are staffed at seven members in that department. 
the salary is set at $44,000 a year. I haven't heard any justification or logical reasoning as to why we need that person. I would suggest that we reduce that to zero. That's $44,000. On the same page, the Sheriff's Department is looking to create a communications officer number 20. I'm not quite sure if that means 20 communication officers or not. But keep in mind that at the end of 2019, the contract with the City of Glens Falls for communication for dispatching expires to the tone of $140,000. So we're looking to create a position for $40,000, but next year you're going to lose a revenue source of $140,000. My suggestion is to delete that and zero out that request. How much is that, Jeff? $40,564. You'll be minus $140,000 in revenue next year once that contract expires. Is there a chance to renegotiate? I don't think so. It leads me to the... And this is a question maybe somebody can answer. Page 6 of this document. We're deleting the first wilderness coordinator position for the person who's retiring. $6,467. Would someone explain to me why, if we're deleting this, there's a sense that we don't need it? Why then are we giving the county planner an increase, a stipend of $6,467? That doesn't make any sense. Why are we giving... We're deleting a position, $6,467, and we're giving the minus to the woman. So my suggestion would be is you're looking to increase the county planner if you increase it by $2,467. I will attempt to answer that question. It's my understanding that the $6,467 is a stipend that the county planner was receiving anyhow. And I think this is just deleting that position. Deleting the stipend and putting it into the salary. But I believe the planner was receiving that money already through the stipend. It looks like in the proposal here that the salary was set last year at $2,184. And it looks like the proposed salary for 2019 is $86,651. That's because the salary did not include the stipend. Okay. I would go to page 7. And I would refer to the animal control line item. It's currently budgeted at $50,000. I know the Sheriff's Department has done a really good job on handling the calls here today. I would suggest that we reduce that from $50,000 to $15,000, which would be a reduction of $35,000. Which one was that? Animal control. Animal control. And finally, oh, no, there's a couple more. Then give rationale for that, Jack. Yeah, we've had about five calls this year. I think projecting out that based on five calls, it seems to have a different chief, I guess. $15,000 appropriated for that. And I think those calls were primarily served by the Sheriff's Department. Can we get some, at some point, maybe some flavor and some accuracy, if that's indeed accurate? Sean, at some point, yeah. My understanding, the number that Supervisor Donovan just gave you, there's about half a dozen calls this year. There are times when Sheriff's Office staff or State Police staff can't handle a call that we require an expert to come in, regardless of who the organization is, somebody that has the education and training in that. And when we have to jump to that step, 
there's obviously a cost involved to have them come in. <clears throat> uh, usually there's a lot of hours involved with uh, cruelty investigations or neglect investigations. And if it be obviously becomes a court case, then they have to go to court and they get paid for their time as well. So I can't speak to as to what the dollar amount is, but if the, the call load is. Maybe it's hard for this. Yeah. Is accurate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Um, at this point in time, in this update here, it looks like that we've reduced the contingency account by $39,000. I would recommend to the board that we reduce that an additional $51,000, which will give us a balance in the contingency account of approximately $533,739. And finally, on the final page, my notes, there is a salary adjustment or increase for the deputy insurance administrator. That's our self-insured, that's our compensation um, program. It looks like the request is, and it's coming out of the reserve fund, which is the fund balance uh, for workers' compensation. You're requesting an increase of $8,832, which is from $46,544 to $55,376. I would suggest that we stay current with the raises that we propose for other employees and give them a 2.6% increase rather than an adjustment of $8,000 uh, next year. And finally, um, I would like to recommend, and this comes out of the occupancy tax funding, that we maintain the same level of funding for the CBB, which is $300,000 in 18, we maintain that level of funding to year 19. That concludes my Thanks. Okay. Well, there wasn't a lot of questions, but uh, as, as far as those items, uh, when the chairman returns to this chair, we, uh, the board can deal with those. Yes. Uh, Claudia? Thanks. Um, I was going to go through similar to what Jack did, um, but I won't reiterate all of his points. I do want to thank you, Mr. Thomas, for putting together a very nice budget. The city of Glen Falls is drowning in taxes. Our residents pay so much in taxes, and I know it's not just the county. We have our own city burden, and we also have the school tax burden. Um, but anywhere we can reduce the taxes for the city residents, it's helpful, even if it is only 40 cents. <laughs> I want to thank Mr. Moore for going over the budget with me as well, and, and that's what it is. It's kind of, uh, to the average taxpayer in Glen Falls, it's only going to be a 40 cent increase for them, um, roughly. I think that's what we talked about, right? Yeah. So well, this isn't, you know, the budget as it is, is is pretty strong and not that bad for the city. But wherever we can cut, I think it's important that we do that. And I also think that it's important that we're very fair in the way that we're um, doling out our raises to people. Those who don't remember from a couple of years ago, we instituted the performance evaluations for all of our department heads. And the idea there was to give them ratings and then tie that to their actual salary increases so that we're not um, doing it in a way that's arbitrary and hopefully we're also incentivizing them to give us their very best work. I know we have good employees and they're doing a great job, but it's nice when you do a really good job and you get a little bit extra, that's, that does incentivize people. So um, we tried to do that last year. Mr. Thomas, I know you did did yep. that with some of the salary I was And, and I was uh, criticized by a few on how I did that. Too. Right, and uh, <laughs> this year it seems like we're going back to the old way and I'm disappointed to see that. I think that Mr. Moore has done a great job carrying through with the performance evaluations, and we should make them meaningful to our department heads. And I did ask about this um, prior to coming here today, and I was told that we just didn't have quite enough money to give out the raises in the way that we thought we would be able to 
based on the performance evaluation. But if we eliminate some of these positions that Supervisor Diamond just went through, like the new HR position, the new IT position, and the communications officer number 20, that saves us over $100,000 in our budget, which I would suggest would be fair and wise to use that money towards um, appropriating money for raises based on their performance evaluations and not the arbitrary numbers that we have given to several of our individuals who I'm not saying aren't good employees, our clerk of the board, our HR department, there's two positions there, and then there's four positions in probation which are getting higher than the 2.6% for no other reason than they came and asked. You know, there's lots of other people, other department heads who are well deserving as well. And well, there are other um, reasons for the uh, HR. Uh, so let me uh, try try to uh, state uh, her case. Uh, she feels that she's worked here for three years. The previous HR director that was in that position before was hired at eighty-five thousand dollars. She feels that after three years, she should be getting. $85,000. Wow, okay. I don't agree with okay. that. Well, okay, I'm just... I'm, and I'm saying I think that we should fairly give everyone the 2.6%, come back, look at Ryan's performance evaluations, and either bump people up or give them a bonus, an end-of-year bonus, which is something that um, can be done in the county, even though I know we're not private sector, but we can do this. Just have another couple things, and then I will be done. The other one is um, I agree with Supervisor Diamond on reducing the contingency fund. There is no magic number for the $275,000 that are sitting in that account. There's nothing magic about that number. We can reduce that number and lessen the tax levy on our residents throughout the county. And lastly, I would agree with keeping the CVB funding the same this year. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Beatty. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm not so sure if I have any questions either. Um, I did want to opine, though, on uh, a few of the uh, previous speakers. Uh, I, I agree with uh, Supervisor Diamond, probably on 90% of what he presented, uh, not quite all of it, but most of it, uh, as well as uh, Ms. Bramer. Um, on the tax issue, uh, our, 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 our surplus funds are in great shape, and I thank you, Mr. Budget Officer, for you and Mr. Moore doing a tremendous job in, in keeping this county financially healthy through correct budgeting uh, and leadership. That said, um, we can find ways to have no tax increase. In fact, I just saw where Saratoga County is decreasing their tax rate to their county citizens. Uh, I watched that last night on, I think it was Look TV, um, where they are decreasing their, uh, their tax uh, uh, rate to their, uh, to their citizens. We are in a very good position, and I know let's not spend it all, what about the rainy day and all that stuff, and I get that. Um, but if we went to a flat tax, we still reserve the right to increase the tax under the state tax uh, levy of 2%, even if we went to 0% this year. So I, I want to put that up there. Um, I, I think we can do, uh, I think I would recommend that we, before we approve this budget, that we have another budget meeting uh, as soon as possible to iron out some of the things that we can cut on and, and maybe get to that position of a flat tax rate. Uh, and I would also uh, uh, request that that meeting be done, like I said, within a week so that we can keep the process moving forward, but we, we address Supervisor Diamonds, Supervisor Bramers, and actually those are the same things I, I had on my list to bring up, and I'm glad you two did it before me um, uh, because I, I'm, I'm just opining on it also. Um, as far as when it comes to personnel salaries and so forth, that's always a very touchy thing. Uh, I can tell you I've had extensive experience with that. Extensive experience with it. And um, what happens if we don't handle the, 
procedure correctly is it creates morale problems, significant morale problems, because then some department heads or whatever in my company, uh, they are called directors, could be upset and should be upset when they feel the playing field is not level. I, I have some strong suggestions on that in the budget meeting on how we can level that playing field. Uh, right now, I don't want to go into it because it would be about a 10-minute uh, dissertation, but uh, I would be glad to recommend or uh, add my expertise to that process to make it as fair and as even as humanly possible and reward the people that are doing a job up and above board of what uh, most are doing. And I think they should be rewarded too. So uh, uh, that's where I'm coming from on this. So I would recommend today, instead of adopting this budget, which I, again, I want to thank you for all your hard work, that we, we don't adopt it until we iron out some of these challenges of Mr. Diamond, of Ms. Bramer, myself, and so forth. We iron out these things, and we can do it next week, and then we can adopt it in our meeting, which is what, two or three weeks away in our formal board meeting. So that would be my recommendation. That's all. Thank you, Mr. S uh, thank you, Chairman. Are there any other questions? If they're not, I'm going to turn the meeting back over to the chairman. I, I, I just have one about the um, the mortgage tax. You said on the sheet you gave us here that does not include the quarter percent. Right. Okay. And you're right. It, it's in the budget. It's budgeted into the budget as we were going to receive it. Uh, okay. There's about two hundred thousand dollars that's usually left out, or low, even sometimes a little more that's left out that just never gets budgeted. Uh, it's always uh, been been my practice and the county clerk's practice to be very conservative about it. So we have two hundred thousand dollars. If all things being equal, uh, we anticipate we will receive, which will help carry us through to April. Thank you. Yep. Yes, Mr. Merlino. Oh, I, <clears throat> I happen to agree with. Um, I think you have a great budget here. I think you worked hard on it. But there are a couple of little niches that should be uh, maybe have another meeting to go over and speak about. And like one of them was the cutting of the CVB board. Um, we had a great year this year in tourism, in op tax revenue, sales tax revenue. And I think uh, the work that we've been doing with the CVB board has really stepped that up a lot. And you know, they've done a lot of good work for, with us and for us and for the community. And that money is occupancy tax money. It's really not billed to the taxpayers. So um, I think discussions like those little things should be uh, brought up. And, uh, and I think we should have maybe, a, even if it was another three or four hour meeting, uh, to go over some of the, the finer points. I, I, I like the idea of um, the proposed general fund balance. And I put it in the budget, but it's there in case we, we need it instead of taking it out and just put it towards. And that's what Mr. Beatty's talking about. We can do this and lower no taxes, you know, lower the, lower it, but uh, it, it, it'll be funneled slowly into the over the course of the year in case we need it. So, um, no, I, um, I, I'd, I'd just like to see maybe a meeting uh, early next week and just to go over a couple of things. I don't, uh, as I said, it's my recommendation that the items on that sheet there, for the most part, should be funded. They, they were requested by the department heads. They were removed from the budget, $1.3 million, to get to 2.41%. So it, it would be my recommendation that you fund most of them. Uh, that will be directly out of the fund balance. So we'll be spending some of the fund balance. If we don't get the mortgage tax, we'll spend another million of fund balance. So, yes? Uh, I just like to back up something Supervisor Molino said. Uh, we had a uh, contract with the CVB last year. There was a performance contract. We offered them uh, $300,000. Uh, we established uh, uh, some guidelines and, and uh, goals for them. They far exceeded those goals and guidelines and our greatest expectations <coughs> for which we felt it was a good investment of the occupancy tax to invest in the CVB so they can continue with their great work. Uh, 
After all, that's what the occupancy tax is really about. As you know, Dennis, I, I, I don't uh, really get involved in the occupancy budget at all. I, 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 leave, that. I leave that to you, uh, Supervisor Molino. I, I feel that you're the two gentlemen that, uh, that should uh, appropriate those dollars the way that you see fit. I, I think you know more about tourism than, than I do, and uh, that's the way it should be done. And that's how I, whatever you put forward, that's, unless you go crazy, that's, uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Supervisor Lowe. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with regard to the points that have been brought up, I can only uh, speak uh, directly to uh, my committee. Uh, for deputy insurance the, in the budget uh, meetings, uh, the changes in the salary were based on uh, what was appropriate for the work that was being done for that position, that, thus the uh, larger raise. As far as IT, that was actually brought to our committee, and uh, uh, the need for the additional position was uh, thoroughly described uh, by Mr. Colvin and approved by the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. In a way, it, it, right now, it's it's um, <clears throat> what's been presented is uh, what's called the uh, from the budget officer is the tentative or preliminary. The tentative budget. The resolution you have in front of you establishes the preliminary budget. Between the presentation and the resolution, the budget can be changed from the. Uh, tentative budget to the preliminary and then after the public hearing it can be changed again and uh, uh, to what's called the final adopted budget. Now <clears throat> we can approach this a number of different ways. Uh, first we can, um, now let me just speak with uh, two uh, 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 the supervisors that had very specific items that um, we can um, take them one at a time today and we can um, uh, discuss what codes they are in and uh, if there's a deletion, uh, fine. If, if you have a recommendation as to what um, revenue code might be affected by that deletion, fine. Uh, and that can uh, be in the form of an amendment. Uh, that's one way to proceed. I suspect we could be here for a while, but that's okay. We're all paid to serve. Uh, the um, another option would be, uh, and I'm not picking e these options. I'm just saying the other option would be to uh, pass the resolution for the supervisors that have proposed changes that they wish to make uh, to meet with our county administrator uh, and uh, to identify the correct form uh, that such an amendment uh, would take, uh, so that at the uh, after the public hearing, if you so chose to, you could introduce those amendments, uh, amendment or amendments, and then we would act on them individually, one at a time. Um, really, uh, right now at this moment, it's, you know, or, or uh, for example, uh, if there's a, 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 a more macro uh, amendment that uh, somebody's uh, considering, uh, that uh, can be entertained uh, equally um, as as well as the individuals. So, um, Jack, you sort of led things off. Uh, I guess I would stop to you. What's your pleasure? Would you prefer to deal with these one at a time now? Would you prefer to meet with the county administrator and articulate each one and what codes are affected? I guess Claudia, uh, we could and Doug. I guess we could uh, um, we could uh, we could do it that way. Um, we could uh, also. Um, uh, but I would want you to hear the schedule. I think we're okay on the schedule, but I want you to hear the schedule that we have uh, given us by um, uh, state law, uh, just so you understand the, um, the scheduling. Uh, we have to have an adopted budget by December 
it's late December. You know, I can get you the latter part of December. So another opportunity would be to uh, table the resolution, uh, as uh, someone suggested, uh, and uh, uh, we could have a, um, I guess, a, uh, a committee meeting. Uh, but I, I think if you choose that course, uh, my only recommendation would be to have a, a, a more specific idea of what it is that you wish to do. Um, I mean, you don't have to have it right down to necessarily the number of the code, uh, the subcode, but to have a, a more specific idea of which department, which codes within the budget. But equally, if, for example, you're cutting something, what do you do on the revenue side? Are you reducing revenue? What revenue are you reducing? You're reducing property taxes. We're going to need to know uh, to uh, get to a final budget. So those, I guess, are the three options that we have uh, before us. If you prefer to table the um, resolution um, when it's brought up, uh, there will be a discussion, uh, and you can, uh, there can be a motion uh, to table. Uh, the motion to table would take precedent. Uh, we would table, and then we could have a, um, a meeting, I assume, if the motion would be of the budget committee, uh, but I'm not going to prejudge that. But we'd have a meeting of a committee, uh, and we would uh, go over some of these things. So when we get to um, resolutions, um, that's the point in time where we would decide as a group which way we wish to proceed, and motions would either succeed or fail at that point in time. Does everyone understand what, I, what I've just okay. uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, it's not my intentions to slow the process down, but I'd like to suggest that the recommendations, these are, this is the first time this committee supervising heard any recommendations about any positions, and I'd like to give them an opportunity to think about that. Maybe I can come in and meet with the uh, county administrator to finalize the codes, the recommendations, the sell and the deletions to be circulated to so they can think about it, and then we can have a discussion on, um, you know, the, the final budget, whether they want to continue appropriating the positions or if they want to. I, I think that would be most and helpful. That way everybody gets That would be most helpful because then whatever amendments are being advanced, yes. each of you has the, have those I amendments have right in front of you. You get to see exactly what's being proposed and what is, and how it's affected, and then we can have our discussion. And, and, and hopefully come to a, go, a good place. Claudia, I saw your, your hand raised. Well, I, I also don't want to slow, the, slow down the process. I am concerned, though, that then we won't have any time to discuss it among ourselves except for at the November 16th full board meeting, which nobody is really super excited about that hashing out individual budget amendments at that meeting, <coughs> which is why I think we should hold a separate budget meeting. And, uh, Frank? Yeah. Uh, I'm willing to have another budget committee meeting. I'm not sure if the budget committee can take any action. I, I, I think, but we could discuss whatever you want to discuss, and uh, then it would be brought back to the, the full board, because it's, I think we've gone beyond the budget committee. All right, that is okay. correct. That is correct. But, but we can discuss. But there right. seems to be. Get it hatched out, so it, okay. So what I would um, Mr. Chairman? I, yes, Mr. Bates. Thank you. Um, I like the fact that you would get with Mr. Moore get the proper codes and amendments, and then I would like that to be brought to a special budget meeting, a committee meeting, that we all, uh, and, then, and most supervisors attend that meeting anyway, so it's, it's almost like a full board, but uh, we can then discuss each individual one that you have recommended, uh, Mr. Diamond and Ms. Bramer, and then that, to me, is the logical course. So we have the information in front of us, we then have a, an opportunity to discuss each individual one, okay, uh, in a committee format uh, with other supervisors attending and opining if they wish. So that to me is, seems like a logical uh, process. And then whatever comes out of that committee, the budget can be adjusted for a full board meeting in November. This can all happen within the next two or three weeks. As Mr. Moore stated, we have to the end of December, but I'd like to get it done in November like everybody else, I'm sure. So to me, we have a logical uh, format here to uh, to get to some type of conclusions on the uh, proposed amendments that uh, the supervisors brought up. 
Thank you. All righty. Let's. Uh, uh, we, we will take up this resolution under resolutions. Of course, the, the, it'll be open to the floor for further discussion. Uh, but let's uh, continue with our agenda. At this time, I'd offer the privilege of the floor. Anyone in the audience wishing to address the board at this time? Uh, yes, ma'am. My name is Terry McGuire. I'm from Lake Luzerne. And I heard an interesting budget amount of 5000 for animal control. If you're basing it on... 50? 50. Okay. Um, if you're basing it on the number of calls, that's probably adequate. If you're basing it on the problem, it's not. Um, I was recently bitten by a stray, and I understood that I had to quarantine it for 10 days. That's the law. I call from Lake George to Albany. Warren County has no SPCA, no place to bring it. I called the Sheriff's Department. He sympathized with me. He's very nice. I'm, I don't know if that was one of those five calls. However, um, I had to quarantine the cat because I have no place to bring it. Uh, North Shore, I was, there was 49 cats ahead of me. Uh, Mohawk, Kitten Angels, you name it, I called them. Upstate SPCA never called me back. Adirondack Save Astray. Um, the cats are a nuisance, and it's a problem that was created by owners that didn't take responsibility for them. Either they tossed them away, or they have pets that aren't sterilized and let them out to populate the world. There are, the numbers are tens of millions across the United States. I cannot believe Warren County is the only county that does not have a problem. My intent originally was to bring to your attention the seriousness of the number of stray cats. However, in my search, I found an interesting solution that I wish you would consider at least. I printed a guide and asked that you each get a copy of it, and on the front of the guide, there is a YouTube video called Feral Cats. It runs 16 minutes and one second and it's put out by the U.S. Humane Society. The program is called TNR, Trap, Neuter, Return. The program calls for cooperation of many people throughout the community, so it's not just a board problem, it's a community problem. So you wouldn't be trying to find a solution, there would be a group of people. And in that would include veterinarians, animal shelters, municipal leaders, health professionals, and wildlife advocates. The program I saw done in a trailer park just down from the town hall. There was feral cats running around. I have, I took three of the kittens several years ago. One died of feline leukemia when he was two. I recently got another one of the 10 that these people came in and captured. So they came in and they captured 10 kittens and the adult ferals. Of the ferals, two were had FIV, which is like our HIV, two more in such poor condition, they were euthanized. The other females were spayed, released. There was one individual who manages them, they feed them. Take away the food, you say? Okay. Now it creates a vacuum because feral cats are very territorial. If you take away their food, they're going to only move closer to where they can get food. It could be your garbage can, wherever it is. They're not going to move away. If we remove them, what happens is it creates a vacuum. More cats can come in because there's no other, no other cat to keep them away. Another example of TNR on a larger scale was Newburyport Waterfront in Massachusetts. In 1992, there were 300 cats. And in the first year, 200 were trapped, 100 were adopted out. In 1998, there was 100% sterilization. In 2007, six cats remained on the waterfront. <coughs> what happens when we sterilize them, we take the kittens, they're adopted out, they're easy. Now we stop them from having kittens, 
So attrition happens naturally. The cats get older, they die out. Since they removed those kittens from the trailer park and since they sterilized the ones that were there, there have been no more kittens. This program works, but it takes a lot of preparation and it takes a lot of commitment from a lot of people. These, these cats didn't appear because from magic. We created it. There's another, um, there's also a facility who takes, it calls farms. So every farm has mice, rats, chipmunks, squirrels. They will go to this particular facility or any of them and they take cats. They will confine them for a two week period, feed them, care for them, turn them loose. Now these cats are working. There's a 150 acre farm that will take as many cats as this one woman has that have been sterilized. So now they're not creating this humongous population of cats running all over. These cats are working. They're, they're getting mice, they're getting the rats, and according to this one particular owner of the farm, he hasn't had a problem since with their hay, their grain. So we do, we do have a problem, and I have a problem, personally. You know, it's a, it's a health problem. Doing nothing isn't taking care of anything. You know, doing nothing does not address the public health concerns or reduce predation or improve animal welfare for them and other animals, and it does not reduce nuisance complaints. And if they are sterilized, you're not going to have the spraying, you're not going to have the cat biting, you're not going to have everything that goes with a cat. So, um, I'm just, I would just implore the board that they consider this problem because it is a problem. I do not expect it to be addressed today or next week. I just would ask that you consider it and at least look at that 16 minute video because that, that will tell you basically what's in this information that I've requested the board get. And thank you for the opportunity and it's been a real education. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the board at this time? Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to piggyback on what this, this young lady just said. Of course. Yeah, just, uh, ma'am, thank you for your, uh, for your comments. Uh, one of the issues that uh, in the near future that will be coming down the road is, uh, is that Warren County is a county that does not have uh, a shelter for, uh, for animals, for pets. Uh, Washington County is a county that does not have a shelter uh, uh, some people actually smile when you say that. It's kind of like, gee, that's a, that's a little corny, you know, that you would actually want to spend money on, uh, on cats and dogs, okay? Well, I don't think it's real corny. I think, I think it's real serious, and I think that's what we as human beings do in that effort. But again, an, an, an effort uh, possibly with Washington County to, uh, to work in a, in, a, in a joint venture to have a shelter which both counties can support. So thank you for your comments. quarter of the budget is spent on picking these animals up, euthanizing them, and disposing of them. So I'm not just suggesting a shelter. I am suggesting a joint cooperative venture. It's, it's, you're not going to keep them. You're not going to take them in. You're going to sterilize them, turn them back, and by normal attrition, it will reduce. But you have to make sure that some, and they're managed, and they're colonies. These cats are colonies. So if they're managed, if someone has to feed them, it's, it's not an easy. And then the other portion is education to the public. Okay? Thank, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. All righty. Um, there being no one else to wish to address the board at this time, I think what I would like to do is um, move into the resolutions because I suspect there's going to be a considerable amount of discussion on the one resolution so and there's a lot to consider relative to that resolution so let's um, let's move right into um, uh, resolutions um, I'll have the um, uh, and we'll begin with our uh, they both, they both have to be brought to the floor, so I'd ask for a motion to bring resolutions 431 and 432 to the floor. 
Uh, Mr. Dickinson, uh, Mr. Merlino on the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. All right, let's take um, 431 first. Um, 431? Yes, yeah, so let's, talk, let's talk to 431, which is um, um, an amendment uh, to the um, budget officer's budget. It's actually, a, uh, the amendment is, as I understand it, uh, uh, more specifically defining Rob, more specifically defining that appropriation Excuse into me, the various Kevin, codes. I do not have a 431. Yeah, I don't know. There's a mis misprint on the schedule. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 430. It's a misprint. My apologies. 432 and 433. 432 and 433. I was looking at the um, um, the one sheet here, and um, uh, so let the record show we're discussing 432 and 433. I've got a 433. I don't have a 433. You don't have 433. Uh, 433 is the um, resolution uh, to um, uh, authorize the public hearing in 430. Two is an amendment to the existing budget to um, redefine um, uh, one of the codes into uh, multiple codes. Uh, does everyone have these resolutions in front of them? I, I believe you should. The two resolutions. Okay, two, re two separate resolutions, correct. So on 432, uh, discussion on 432. What's it mean? Uh, Frank? Uh, it's what it is, is when we budget the, uh, the, the money for paving, it's put into the, the, the single code on the, on the left, and uh, uh, Mr. Lynch would like it broke out by uh, project. So the total equals uh, uh, $2,566,190, I believe it is. That's my understanding, is it's just a, a more detailed uh, breakdown of that uh, that appropriation. And I'm okay with it as long as uh, the DPW uh, superintendent's okay with it and the chairman of the DPW committee is okay with it. As the chairman of the DPW, uh, went through DPW, you're okay with that, uh, Mr. Garrity? Well, not 100% because I've asked for 10 years that the projects be identified by where they are. I mean, and why we can't put the name of the community where we're working in on, on the projects. I mean, that's just one, one little line. That's all I asked for. And if these are projects for 2019? That's correct. Yeah, why don't we add where they're being worked on? You can assume where they are, but I don't want to assume. I want to know what community the road projects are being done. We can do that, and that, that list that I provide the treasurer's office only cuts it down because that's what they put into New World. They don't list the whole project load out of where it would be. I think that would be cumbersome for them to do that, but for this board, I will provide today where each one of those roads are. Well, cumbersome for me to vote on it without knowing. <laughs> if, if you want to give me a list, I can go right down through it right now. Why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? No. We're here. We are here. <laughs> Without objection, we'll hit, hit bring our uh, superintendent to the microphone and um, it's only great to be and um, right, right and we will uh, write the town right next. To you. Right the location next. To I, I will. Can I? I'll, I'll read them off first. Uh, Federal Hill Road is the first one on there. That's the uh, town of Bolton. Friends Lake Road. That would be in the, and, and I'm hoping this is right, I believe that's Chestertown. Yeah. Knapp Hill is also in Chestertown. West Hague, of course, is in Hague. New Hague is in slow, Hague. Slow down a little whoa, bit, whoa, please. Yeah. Yeah. Slow, slow down. We got right okay. down there. <laughs> I, again, I will provide a list to everyone after right. after the board meeting today. Well, I'm on West Hague. That's in Hague. Okay. okay. <laughs> New Hague is also in Hague. East Shore is in Horican. Beaver Pond, I'm not sure of, but I believe that's Horican also. <coughs> Peaceful Valley Road is Johnsburg. Gore Mountain Road is Johnsburg. Bloody Pond is Queensbury. Main Street is Johnsburg. 
Queensbury Avenue is Queensbury. <laughs> West Mountain Road is Queensbury. High Street is Thurman. South Course Road is Warrensburg. Harrington Hill Road is Warrensburg. And the last one, which is Cracks Hill, and will be on many different roads throughout the county. Very good. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Garrity, does that uh, give you what you need? Yes, he's, he's going to write them down for me. <laughs> okay. I will send out a list. <laughs> okay, very good. I have asked that. Very good. Mr. Simpson. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I just Simpson. had a question for uh, Superintendent. The Beaver Pond Road, that's a town road, so it must be the intersection. It's the intersection okay. where it is going. Okay. So this is breaking down the one code as uh, per the request of uh, our deputy treasurer. And thank you very much for that detailed work. I, I too, was very confused. Thanks, Mr. Garrity, for asking for more detail, and thanks, uh, Kevin, because now I, you get a better understanding of where we're spending the money, county. Further discussion on... I've got to make sure I have my numbers right. 432. Then I'll, uh, I'll close discussion on 432. I think we should act on 432. Uh, we need a roll call. We need a roll call on 432. Clerk will read the roll. <coughs> Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. Mr. Loeb? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Mr. Merlino? Yes. Mr. Straub? Yes. Mr. Wild? Yes. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Sokol? Yes. Chairman Conover? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Yes. <laughs> and I can hear you in the back. <laughs> All right, that passes. Uh, now we'll move on to uh, uh, 433. I'll open discussion on 433. Um, uh, without objection, I'd like to bring uh, the treasurer to the microphone because I, I, I just want everyone to understand the, um, the schedule and the implications on the schedule. And perhaps, Ryan, you could also uh, uh, chime in on this just so everyone understands this clearly. Um, why don't you start, Ryan, and then Mike, you, you have a certain amount of time that you need to have to get the tax bills out. And well, that's actually real property, but I can... Okay, real property, uh, but you know something about yeah. real property. That used to be your <laughs> stomping ground, I think. Okay. I haven't been being rude looking at my, uh, my phone. I've been looking at county law just to make sure I know uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, but basically the process is that uh, the whatever the tentative budget with any uh, amendments such as the one just passed by the board uh, by resolution, uh, that tentative budget with any amendments goes to a public hearing. And then uh, I will, you look at uh, section 360 of the county law, uh, which uh, uh, deals with adoption of the budget and the appropriation resolution. And it reads, after completion of the public hearing required by section 359, the Board of Supervisors by resolution may further change, alter, and revise the tentative budget. Uh, the tentative budget as changed, altered, and revised shall be finally adopted by resolution of the Board of Supervisors not later than December 20th. December 20th. And uh, so let's, uh, Mike, let's back off from uh, 1220 a little bit just so we that is not enough time to get everything done on the bills and get them to especially like the town of Queensbury which requires them um, for the week between Christmas and New Year's. Right. So backing off from uh, 1220 let's say uh, how much time is uh, you need a, I would back it off at least another 10 days. At least 10 days. That will give that will give the towns and real property enough time to do the bills um, I don't, a few of you were here back in 08 and 09, I think it was the 09 when the budget was extremely late. Um, the bills went out late, um, which meant that all of the payment periods were pushed back considerably, which caused a lot of problems. It also required some legislation to allow for the warrant to be extended longer than normal. 
Um, so those, it, it creates quite a bit of problem. I mean, if you can get it all done by the 15th of December, I think that the real property could probably get it done, which would be five days back from the 20th. So 12-10 would be backing off 10 days. 12-10 would be? That would be fine. You would want 12-10? Yeah. Okay. And I, and I only I only wanted this discussed because of the um, we have to set a public hearing and if we don't hold the public hearing on the 16th uh, then uh, what would be the best date after the 16th to hold a a, a public a meeting and a public hearing? Uh, you can choose to hold it on November 30th. That would give you two weeks, or even December 7th. November 30th or December 7th. Right. Those would be special meetings. Those would be spe special meetings. So that's where we are. Um, the commonly amendments, you know, have some specificity, but that's doesn't necessarily needs to constrain you. You you have ideas on the budget, and we certainly want to entertain those ideas. So going back to the options, the options are uh, we. Um, we can uh, make Frank's budget with this one amendment, the, uh, uh, I think it's called the preliminary, and the preliminary could go to public hearing on the 16th, and you could introduce your amendments at, uh, at that time. Uh, you could, between now and then, you could also uh, hold a, a budget meeting, which would help you decide as to whether you wish to introduce those amendments on the 16th, and also to help you architect them so that they're properly introduced on the 16th. That would be one option. Mm -hmm. Uh, that would be the option that I would recommend, but uh, if uh, you prefer to advance this in some other way, we could um, always uh, hold a, a, a special meeting uh, as the uh, clerk has identified on either the 7th of December or, or the 30th of November. Mr. Garrity? Yeah, I, I just think it's so important. I mean, I certainly want to sit down in a budget committee meeting with everybody present to go through each one of the recommendations they're making and see if we can't come to some result. I mean, I'm going to vote for the tentative budget because I, I understand the process. Vote tentative, then it goes to preliminary. We can we can suggest changes to preliminary, preliminary budget. And I think they have some valid points that we need to discuss mm -hmm. as a group. But I'm also, you know, I don't think we need to prolong this out because we're all adults. We can adjust our schedules to meet the time frame of, of what we need to do for the media and, and to give plenty of recommendations. So, you know, I mean, we're, if, if there's concerns, I believe we should reconvene the budget committee as soon as possible to sit down and talk to it and then try to stay the course if we can. And, and the course was at our next board meeting in a couple of weeks, have the preliminary, right? That's it. Once it goes tentative, it goes to preliminary and then to have the hearing on it a preliminary, and then bring up the changes, so be it, that are from our discussion, whoever wants to introduce them. That would be my recommendation, and, that we do I that and set the 16th, and between now and then, hold the budget meeting, uh, let's get ourselves aligned correctly as to what you, uh, you all think on any specific item, and then you'd be ready to uh, move or not move on the 16th. Um, nothing prevents uh, the pleasure of the board even on the 16th. The, the, as you know, things can happen, the things can be tabled, things, things can happen, but it would allow us to stay with that schedule. I'm not looking to drive that at you. you, you it's the consensus of the board as to how you want to proceed. But I just wanted you to understand the schedule. I want you to understand the, um, the concerns from a staff point of view. I think we have time here. Um, I think Mr. Garrity's suggestion is a good one um, that we should entertain um, uh, 4.33 and set the public hearing it, and then um, between now and that meeting have a budget meeting and and then you'd be ready on the 16th to do what you need to do after the public hearing. Is that agreeable? Yes. I can, we, I can suggest my amendments at the public hearing and we can amend the budget at that point. I know you had a few, and I know, Claudia, you had quite a few. No, I mean, Supervisor Diamond and I both said we don't want to slow down the freight train, but I would like a commitment from the budget officer that he will call the special meeting between now and the 16th. I said that earlier. But okay. I don't know. If you don't want to take my word, don't. No, I wasn't sure if you were still on board with that. <laughs> I don't if know you what are, to tell you. I told you that a little while ago. 
Well, I'm more than happy to do it. And then all your further discussion on um, uh, Mr. Yeah, Garrity. My, my suggestion would is maybe next Thursday, if, if everybody's agreeable, Thursday has always been finance for snow days. Yeah. Maybe next Thursday we could get together if everybody could just plan at their schedule to see if next Thursday we could do that discussion <coughs> and then, you know, figure out a way if, if we want former mayor to make his recommendations at the public hearing, so be it. If not, we can bring it from a consensus of opinion of a majority of the members, and then he could still bring whatever changes he wants. I think it's a better way if we do it on a structured basis. Um, I, that's my opinion. Supervisor Thomas. How about we set the committee meeting right now? Well, that's what I'm asking. That, yeah. mm -hmm. that way we'll know what it is. And we'll if it were. You know, I, d I don't have a problem getting here at the committee meetings. So Sir, Thursday, November 8th, 10 o'clock? Okay, it's done. Sold. It's done. And um, the 8th at 10? That's what we're showing, the 8th at 10 o'clock. Budget. Well, well, can we, we also make sure that <coughs> there is a year time and the information is available to us? Yeah, it, it's, let me just reemphasize to the supervisors. If you could meet with Ryan, if you could meet with Ryan and uh, and, or it, and just bring some specificity, such that you can. I mean, I don't think that you know we. Sure. Uh, if if uh, if I could make a special request that those meetings be Monday or Tuesday. Uh, I haven't seen my wife in two weeks, and I'm supposed to take Wednesday off. <laughs> Well, we have a deputy administrator, correct? Yes. I think what's important is that whatever information the supervisor needs to communicate what they wish to do, they, they can meet with you based on your schedule. Yes. Or we can meet over the phone. Or over the phone. Does that sound like a plan, yeah. everyone? Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Then um, the chair will entertain a motion regarding uh, 433 motion by uh, Supervisor Simpson, second by uh, Supervisor Bramer for the discussion. We'll uh, roll call. Mr. Thomas? Uh, yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. Mr. Loeb? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Yes. Mr. Merlino? Yes. Mr. Strauss? Yes. Mr. Wild? Yes. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Sokol? Yes. Chairman Conover? Yes. Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Sokol, Mr. Simpson, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, everyone. We're adjourned.